Hello, YouTube. Apple makes new highs after revealing they're going to be launching something called the Vision Pro or their VR set. However, we had a notable tick higher from Greed on Friday at 65. We went as high as 74, get right on the edge of getting into Extreme Greed. And right now we are at 73. So we're going to go through a lot today. Really just an update from the weekend video. So first of all, let's have a look here at Apple and see what is happening because we have our 2020 high a higher high into last year, and now a higher high into this year. However, as of right now, this is a failed breakout only because it poked over the area and then fell back below. Remember, we talked about this on the DAX on the weekend. We're going to leave that video for you in the, in the description, but also in the comments if you want to read it. This is exactly what happened to the DAX. And when we looked at the one-month chart, what happened was that it poked over. So we look here. Here is a one-month chart. We note that we have highs going back to 2021, sorry, 2021 and 2022. Every time we get to roughly 16,000, poke over, can't hold it. Poke over, can't hold it. Well, no difference this time. Poke over, can't hold it. So we're still holding higher lows. We're still grinding higher, but it looks like momentum is starting to wane. And this is very important because Apple is the biggest stock in the entire market. And what I would love for you to do is to drop me a comment and tell me whether you think this Vision Pro is going to be something you're interested in buying. It only costs a cool $3,500. Or if you're like, you know what? This is not really all that fantastic. Apple made it better than anyone else, including Meta. But I don't think I really want to buy one. Let me know in the comment section. I would really appreciate that. So as we noted, if we're currently hyping up on, a on VR, sorry, on AI, this VR and uh, AR or virtual reality and augmented reality is a really important component for us to continue the hype cycle going higher. So we had Apple join new all-time high club today. And then we look at Microsoft also did it. We look at last year's high here at 338. Today we printed 338.56. So that's a new high versus 2022, but it is not a new high relative to 2021, meaning not quite a new all-time high. And same thing, failed breakout as of right now. Not by a lot. This is a 12-month chart, so we got half the year left. Just something to be a little bit mindful of. Um, so as we look forward here, that was a catalyst for now. Um, there's one more thing I want to look at here, which is just fear and greed. We talked about this on the weekend uh, in terms of how it plays into the psychology. Well, look, we got higher lows and higher highs. So the squeeze continues. The big short is getting pained. And uh, two more quick things for us to look at. Uh, I actually want to talk about Bitcoin. And why do I want to talk about Bitcoin? Well, because it's getting stomped. So uh, actually, let's have a look here at Bitcoin in a moment. What I want to talk about next is just the S&P and the NASDAQ, because I know that's why you guys tune in. And if you wouldn't mind, please and thank you, considering smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. We put out videos every single day. And we're back to our regular schedule. Thank you for your support ahead of time. So on the weekend, we talked about support and resistance coming from our Fibonacci levels, from our all-time high down to our, our 2020 low. And we have 42961 as our 61% retracement. What's our high of the week? 429.46. That means we're within 15 cents of hitting the target. And as of right now, what do we have? A failed weekly breakout. But it's only Monday, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. But this is what the bears want to see. They want to see a sell. And the reason why was because we pointed this out. We look here to our seasonality chart on the weekend. We look here to June. And I'll show you the one that I'm looking at right now instead, where we form a higher high, another high going into June. Okay, let's have a look at S&P. So let's remove that. Let's go to this chart over here. S&P, we got a high into end of May. And we got another high into June, which means we actually had back-to-back -back higher highs. So high, higher high. And then the sell. Well, as of right now, it looks like the sell is starting. It hasn't confirmed because when we look here to a one month chart, we are still above the May high at 42258. I laid out a very clear plan for our group in terms of how to get prepared for this. And again, you can join us for a 14 day free trial if you want to trade with me, Justin from YouTube. All right, there you go. So what we need to see is a failed monthly breakout like we're seeing on the weekly for in order for us to confirm we're actually looking for a leg lower. So this would be the first corrective wave. We get a dead cat bounce. We get a reject at our May highs. And our May highs are 422, which we just laid out. And then we go down for a nastier cut. What are the events? Well, I think it's a sell the news on Apple. We get a dead cat bounce and a sell into the Fed. That's what I think. Am I going to be correct? Hey, this is a game of probabilities. That's why we enjoy this game. We'd like to tune in and see what's going to happen and then look and see what happens the next day. 
what this what this would lead to for me is the S and P coming down, testing its 50 DMA, dead cat bouncing, and then coming down somewhere between the 200 DMA and the 50 DMA. So if we understand where we are on the monthly, where we are on the weekly, but we're providing a actually one more thing to look at here. Because if we look at this objectively and we look at June versus May, the low, the, the, the low of the month is not that much higher than the May low. So I mentioned this on the weekend. I'm going to reiterate it now. The low in May is 404. So why does that matter? Well, it really matters. If we lose 422, you have to be prepared. We could go down as low as 404. Again, keyword being if, right? Big if, if we repeat the seasonality chart. It appears to have been a terrific template so far this year, not in terms of percents, because we should only be up by about 2.5 right now. We're up 2.5 on the month. However, the pattern has been very accurate. Pump it up into March, fade it into May, rally it back up to close up with roughly a doji, exhaust it higher, and then slam it down. That's what it looks like we're doing. I noticed a second pattern here too, where, uh, I think I might've messed up here where we note that we're actually doing the, uh, the same thing here, where we're channeling. And as long as we hold the channel, things appear to be okay. Again, I went through that on the weekend as well. So now let's have a look here at the one day chart for the S&P to try to understand who is currently winning. Why? Well, we were talking about a massive W in the making and oh my goodness. Now a month later, it appears like the bulls have not, uh, they're not winning, they have won. Why? We had 429.6 within 0.1% of getting to 430. We hit the Fibonacci area. We filled our gap. And uh, we're really looking for these August of 2022 highs to get taken out now. This is really significant. So what we have to think about here is there's now a hole here on the daily chart. There's a gap on the chart. We have to back test the gap going back to August or about a year ago when the big short really started to see what's going to happen here. Apple, well, it filled its gap up today, bearish engulfing candle right around yesterday's low. Volume is ramping up, but there's still this pesky low right here at about 179. So if it cannot hold this current angle of ascent or this uptrend, meaning it reverses immediately tomorrow, goes back up for new highs over 185, I believe that it's going to start going sideways, come back down and fill its gap. That's what I'm watching for. I want to see where that higher low is formed. Again, we went over a lot of this on the weekend as well. So now the last two things for us to look at here, just going to be the heat map where there's not a lot of breadth and depth. Things are just kind of leveling off massive move on Friday and just consolidation for the most part today. Not a whole bunch of red, not a whole bunch of green. It's pretty boring. However, what's our leading indicator when it comes to fear and greed? Oh, that's right. It's the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin is down by 5.5% uh, or uh, Ether is down by 4.5, down to 25.5K. Why is this area significant? I'll show you. Uh, so when I look here, this is a weekly chart. And what we're noting here is that we have our uh, 2017 high identified by this green line. And we have a local low or relative low, which is identified by this ray right here at 25.5K. What's our low? It's 25.4. It's a perfect touch. It's a loss of the 200 weekly. And the clue that led us there was this head and shoulders right here. So we're grinding higher. We're grinding higher. And then we don't. We take a leg down. Dead cat bounce on the 50 DMA rally it back over, come back down to where? Between the 50 DMA and the 200 DMA, which is almost exactly what I just laid out for the S&P. So what would that mean? Well, this has to be a left shoulder. This would have to be the head. This would have to be a left shoulder. We would come down, fill our gap, try to dead cap bounce, fail to hold it, come down to the 50, bounce again, and then come down between the 50 and 200. We have a small gap here too to get filled at roughly uh, 396. So that's really what I'm looking for here. Not gonna leave too much more because I went through a lot of this on the weekend video that's now queued up here on the left-hand side. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.